I knew that stalking you would pay off. <laughs> What's going on, man? Are you in love with me or something? What's going on? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> the world is truly a better place because you are in it. Your impact is undeniable. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Undeniable. I am stoked today I sit with a woman of many titles, one of them being superstar celebrity acting coach, amongst many other things. I'm sitting with Miss Tracy Moore. Hi, Tracy. Hi, <laughs> How you feeling? I feel great. I'm happy to be here. Too. Mm-hmm. Tracy, you're up in here looking sexy today. Let me uh-oh, tell you. Uh-oh. Okay. Uh-oh. Stop trying to get me a date. Watch out. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be her fault. I support it. So, oh, you know, okay. I ain't mad at it. Um, for those of you who don't know Tracy, where you been? Uh, but uh, It's all right. It's all right. Um, her bio is extensive because this woman has done some things. So I am literally going to read the intro to your bio. Then we're going to talk about. Okay. All this other stuff, okay? All right. <laughs> so, Tracy Moore, an award-winning director, executive producer, writer, creator, and celebrity acting coach, continues to redefine titles without boundaries. Mm. As creator and EP, Tracy co-hosts the Crackle Plus original reality series, Inside the Black Box, with Emmy Award-winning actor Joe Morton. The show is currently premiering in its second season. She is also the host of the Spirited Actor podcast, it's great, and iHeartRadio Weekly 30 to 45 minute show for aspiring and working actors. Inspired by her book, Classes and Workshops, the show features celebrity actors as well as known industry guests. Whew, now, right. <laughs> I'm tired. mind you, that was just one paragraph of what's happening with Tracy. <laughs> yes. It's a journey. So it, it's like, where do we start? What I do know is mm-hmm. that in 83, you came here yes. from San Francisco. August 15th, 40 years. Oh, now it's 40 years I've been here. congratulations. Happy Thank anniversary. You. Thank you. <laughs> what were you doing in San Francisco? Um, well, I had just left um, a school, Pacific Conservatory of Performing Arts in Santa Maria, California. Okay. There were two African American students, myself and Dorian Wilson. Oh, wow. and Dorian, um, you may know him as Dr. Overby on the Parkers. Um, outstanding work, and um, we're still friends to this day. Um, I didn't have a desire to necessarily be an actress and follow that career. Mm-hmm. I knew I wanted to work with actors, and I wanted to create with actors. Mm. Um, so that's what got me here so in San Francisco I come back from school and just felt misplaced Mm. Um, and I really felt like I had outgrown San Francisco okay so it was either um, LA which I felt was too close okay and people would visit me all the time (laughs) my family that's horrible but I did and so I thought so I spun this globe that I had in my room, okay, and I landed in the New York area. Oh, and that's when I made my decision. And said I want to go somewhere where I don't know anyone, and at 21 to see, wow. you know, what that experience would be like. And I knew two people in New York um, when I got here. Mm. So I was at a crossroad. I didn't know. I didn't want to. Um, and this is no judgment or shame, but yeah. you know, growing up in San Francisco, you graduate. From high school, you go to college, you get married, 2.5 kids, go on vacation. I just could not place myself in that routine. Gotcha. Um, And so when um, two of my friends, they had moved to New York from Mm -hmm. Oakland. One was a dancer at Alvin Ailey. Another was a singer being managed at that time by Russell Simmons. Oh. So I literally, the year before I moved here in 82, I came to visit fell in love Ah, uh, okay <laughs> I was like I mean the 80s in New York <laughs> and so then um I went back home to move but my dad got ill so mm-hmm. I had to postpone the trip and then I ended up coming here in August and um when I got here I knew I was supposed to be here Aww, yeah that's amazing I love that and yes because we were supposed to meet so of course you're yes. supposed to be here so <laughs> yes because mm-hmm, we're gonna do some things too yeah. oh Y'all heard it. Y'all heard it. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so the first thing that you got into when you got here was casting. Yes. Well, okay. So this is the story. Okay. <laughs> okay. So um, 
when I got here, I knew my two roommates because they became my roommates. Okay. I was on 148th in Harlem, um, in Amsterdam and Harlem. Okay. And um, Curtis Blow told me that I lived in the battle zone, <laughs> which was a little scary. Um, and so um, I literally got off the plane. We went to Green Street Studios because that's where um, her name was Annette. We, her name is Annette. She's still here. <laughs> And uh, Annette was being managed by Russell. Okay. So I walk into the studio. There are three guys sitting on a couch, all black Adidas and black fedoras. <laughs> and Run said to me, Tracy, do you know what rap is? And I said, yeah, Sugar Hill Gang. And he said, that ain't rap. It's like that. And they all started, that's the way it is. And they went, oh. And I was like, oh, my God, so aggressive in New York. <laughs> And um, in the studio was Curtis Blow, Run DMC, and Full Force. Oh. So um, I met Bo Legged Lou, mm -hmm. and he introduced me to his manager, mm -hmm. um, this guy Steve at the time, and he posed a question. And he said, whoever gets this question right, you have to take each, you know, her out to dinner. <laughs> he has to take you out to dinner. Yeah. I got it right. Mm -hmm. He ended up taking me out to dinner. We dated, um, ended up getting married. Um, we share a daughter, Radiance. Um, unfortunately, he passed. Mm -hmm. um, he had lymphoma. and um, But it, this was about, Radiance was 17 when he passed. Okay. And, um, but that was sort of the beginning for me because this is the irony, <laughs> although I don't believe in the irony. But... I coach Vanessa Simmons. I've been coaching Vanessa for over 10 years, mm -hmm. and I also coach Angela. Okay. So for me to have the beginnings in Green Street, their dad, and then full circle, I'm coaching them. As, no, that's as, dope. Yeah, it's <laughs> great. So um, I literally, um, at that time, Steve managed UTFO, Full Force, Lisa Lisa and Cult Jams, Cheryl Pepsi Riley, and Snow. Oh, okay. So that's who <laughs> I was married to. Um, and then later on, we divorced. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when when the cancer came up, you know, everything, life is short, and we spend too much time on petty stuff. Mm. And so all the pettiness just disappeared, and it was about him having the best days. Yeah. And trying to help Radiance transition. You mm. know, my daughter's 39, and she's still... You know, of course, you miss your dad. Yeah. You know, so um, that that. Um, but he was a major influence in the hip hop, and I'm so proud of him and his accomplishments, and yeah. proud that that's Radiance's dad. Um, so it was a great time. Mm -hmm. I oh my god, like I, Madonna was young and no one knew her name <laughs> when yeah. I would go to the Roxy. All of these artists, um, and to see where hip-hop has gone, mm -hmm. it's outstanding. It right. really is. It's mind-blowing, yeah. isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's really obvious, really clear to me that you have a love for your actors. Mm -hmm. You have a love for the craft. Mm -hmm. And I know you to be an exceptional acting coach. Thank you. So did you go from casting to coaching? Or like, I think it's like a natural kind of progression. Yeah. Um, yeah. So like, was that always in your heart, though? Like, I need to work with people to help them be their best. I, I feel like that part has always been in my heart. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't know I was going to transition from casting. But the thing about being a casting director is that you're really directing. In, the, in the beginning of the pre-screening, uh -huh. you know, before the director and producers come in, you're, you know, grooming them. Like, okay, especially if you like someone, yeah. you're like, okay, let's do this again. <laughs> this time, this is what they're looking for. <laughs> Um, I did a film, New Jersey Drive. Yes. <laughs> and so I, ra I auditioned every rapper from Tupac to Biggie. Wow. And in that audition, I said, oof, you know, rappers need help transitioning film and TV. Because this is the thing, singers as well, mm -hmm. they are actors. They are all of them, models, like host, because... Specifically in this situation, it was just tweaking them on how to transition because they do it in their music videos. They're yeah. acting in their music videos. I, I used to watch music videos. This is how I got my clients. <laughs> Literally, I would watch a music video, Music Soul Child. Never forget when he was playing all these different characters. Mm -hmm. 
And I said, I want to work with him. I see the actor in him. And literally, mm. I got a phone call. Wow. That's how I work with Eve. I was working with Buster. I started working with Buster in 97 mm. on the Steve Harvey show. And I was with him, split star, all the guys, right? Yeah. And I was like, ugh, I need some female energy. <laughs> right? And yeah. I was like, just a little bit. <laughs> and I saw Eve, mm -hmm. Love is Blind, and I said, I want to work with her. And ah. literally three days later, Troy Carter called me, and he was like, looking for a coach for Eve. And so I was on the road with Eve and Buster for six years, both of them, just back and forth, never – thank God, had any situation where Buster needed me and Eve needed me at the same time. Right. <laughs> but at that point um, in the audition, I literally put together a brochure saying Tracy Moore acting coach and I help um, musical artists, athletes, and hosts transition to film and TV. Wow. And I didn't have any clients, but I had that <laughs> brochure. And then I got Vinny from Naughty by Nature, yeah. who I love to this day. <laughs> mm-hmm. Vinny brought me over to Flavor Unit. Mm. I work with Taj from SWV, who I love. All of my people I love. Mm -hmm. um, oh, my God. It was just a bunch of people that started. And then I went over. Mona Scott Young called me. She started. I was with Q-Tip at first. Okay. And then I went from Q-Tip to Missy Elliott, Tweet. Mm -hmm. um, I coached 50 Cent on his first audition mm -hmm. for Fast and Furious. Uh -huh. And then when I got to Buster, that was like the golden child. So <laughs> um, I just sort of went through. And then I was coined the hip-hop acting coach. And I was like, I'm not a hip-hop acting coach. I'm an acting coach. Yes. Don't put me in a box. <laughs> Don't put me in a box. Don't define me. <laughs> no, I coach everybody. Um, and then that's just when it snowballed and took off. And then Buster and Eve, both they um, asked me, you know, uh, to not only be on the set, but then with my background in casting, I read scripts, then it eventually went to meetings. So whatever meetings they had in Hollywood, mm. I would go with them, which I was so grateful for that experience. I've sat with the Brian Graziers, mm. the Michael Ovitz of the world. Yes. And um, Seth Rosenfeld, who was my writing mentor, um, Seth said to me, when you go to these meetings, don't say a word. Mm -hmm. Have your pen and paper and don't talk. Mm -hmm. You become the most powerful person in the room. And what was funny, we were at a meeting one time with a big executive, and I didn't say anything, and he kept looking at me. Mm -hmm. He just kept looking at me. And then finally he was like, who are you? <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> and I was like, and before I could open my mouth and say who I was, Buster was like, this is my acting coach, Tracy, blah, 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 mm -hmm. you know. Um, and he just became curious. And I noticed how people would – look at me in mm -hmm. the meetings because you know Mona Scott Young was there Mona is she is the empress yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know and those are her clients that she manages yes and so um you know I would just sit back and you know it's Mona show I'm here to uh, talk about acting or if you need anything yeah um they also um Buster and Eve um, also saw the relationships that I had because I'm, I was a casting director, so I would know directors and producers. Yeah. And, and so that gave me even more credibility with them. Mm. Wow. Now, yeah. <laughs> speechless to a point, okay, <laughs> because I know that you've worked with so many people mm. and everyone just – loves you like I said who doesn't love Tracy oh Moore? I love people <laughs> I do I, I love I was six years old when I said I love love <laughs> I went to Catholic school and sa sister Anne was like what I was just like I just love love <laughs> I remember saying that and sister Anne is still alive today oh wow so when I go to San Francisco unfortunately my second grade teacher she passed but mm. two years ago I saw my second grade teacher and I introduced her to my granddaughter oh so much fun. That's sweet. Yeah, and then when I go to the convent and visit the nuns. Like, you know, there's still Sister Darlene, a bunch of people that are still living in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that. All right, now. Okay. I want to move to Inside the Black Box. Oh. I love this show. Thank you. There's nothing like it anywhere else on TV. Um, it's just, I have so much appreciation for it. Mm. So, like... And it's just filled with gems from legends. Y'all just, and this, mm. the hosts are just, mm. anyway, mm. 
was this your idea? Mm -hmm. And when did it like start in your heart? Um, most of the jobs that I have been in, in terms of corporate, VH1, Nickelodeon, MTV, I have always been the only person of color in the room. Mm. So 18 years, 19 years ago now, 19 years ago, um, I had this idea because a white director said to me, we were auditioning people of color, men, and he said, Tracy, can you do me a favor? Can you ask him to be more ghetto? Oh my goodness. And I said, and I knew what he was saying, Chanel. Right. <laughs> but I said, I don't know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And he said, can you ask him to be more jive, more like Julie Dreyfus in Seinfeld, more ghetto? <laughs> I, can't do it. I swear to you. I said, I don't. And then because people don't think or have a filter between thought and mouth, mm -hmm. It's offensive to say that to a person of color because basically what you're saying to me is, can you make Chanel out black herself? <laughs> right. And then you act as a gauge of what is black and what is not. And you are not black. Mm -hmm. So I said, oh, my journey is different than my white counterpart. Mm. Even today, as a casting director, yeah, my white counterpart could have less credits and get paid more than me. Uh -huh. So there are still disparages in this entertainment business. And so I wanted a platform to address that mm -hmm. because I thought awareness can bring solutions, right? One of my best friends, love him to death, Morgan Spurlock, he did supersize me. That's my dude. Okay. And when Morgan did that film, we, we, we used to have lunch. Like, I don't know, it was just this thing. Once a year we would meet in January. But I said to Morgan, you made McDonald's corporation serve <laughs> salad and yogurt and apple slices. <laughs> like, so if I could do a tenth of what this show can do, what Morgan did, then we can have changes, more people of color in green light positions, workable budgets. Yes. Um, and opportunities. Mm -hmm. And use our own voices to tell our own stories. Just, mm -hmm. And so this was... The solution, because we all know the problems. You know the problems. Mm -hmm. I wanted to focus on the solutions. Yeah. And then I wanted a platform, which I give in my classes, to the actors to have a showcase to, you know, perform and in front of people they would not normally perform with. Yeah. And so that's how it came together. Mm -hmm. And then um, for the past 19 years, you know, I've been trying to put legs on it. Mm -hmm. And then my friend Cassidy Arkins, who's a producer who I love, she introduced me to this guy, Spruce Henry, at iHeartRadio. Okay. I pitched the idea to Spruce. Spruce thought it was a TV show. I was like, no, 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 it's a podcast. Uh -huh. It's a podcast. That's uh -huh. what it was, right? Yeah. He was like, no. I'm going to introduce you to my boss. He took me to Dr. Dave Colon, who works at iHeart. Mm -hmm. Dr. Dave, within like 20 minutes, he was like, Tracy, we're going to do a TV show, and you're going to host it. Yeah. And I was like, no, 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 that's not the <laughs> idea, man. That's not, no, no, I'm good with being behind the si No, right. <laughs> we'll get a host. He was like, no, you're doing it. And then Rachel Weinthorpe, who, Rachel was one of the original producers of The View. Okay. This is how God, right? Mm -hmm. So when Oxygen first happened, mm -hmm. there was a show called The Crib. Okay. Gail King was the host. And she had two mothers on the show, and it was a show talking about being a parent. Okay. Kid, you know, teenagers, all that, right? Mm -hmm. So my girlfriend, I'm um, say her name, LaShawn Brownie. <laughs> LaShawn called me up and told me to come down to Oxygen. I thought she wanted me to come for a casting job. Yeah. She wanted me to come for the host job, right? <laughs> so I was like, well, I'm here, I'm gonna do it. So mm -hmm. I auditioned, and I brought my assistant with me because I thought we were gonna be yeah. casting. Yeah. And I knew in my heart that I got a call back, but I was like, mm, I'm not going to say that, right? So then I got a call back, and then I got the job. Mm. So twice a month, I would go to Oxygen and shoot yeah. with Gail. Okay. And that's how I got to know Gail King. And then Rachel was a young 23, 24-year-old running around producing Gail's show. Wow. Full circle. Mm. Then we come, and Rachel had a meeting with Dr. Dave after me. Uh -huh. I She comes early, 
we see each other scream in the hallway <laughs> and then the next thing you know dr dave is like you guys are gonna work this was in like maybe march 2016 okay um we decided to shoot the sizzle in november and and we we're gonna do it in august unfortunately um rachel's dad passed so mm -hmm. we waited until november mm -hmm. 2016 yeah i called malik yoba asked him to be a guest i called mm -hmm. brandi stanley mm -hmm. um who is an amazing actress um and i called joe morton and they all agreed to do the sizzle reel wow then in january of 2017 joe called and said well how's you know the reel going how i said well we need a celebrity who mm -hmm. has a production company he said i'm a celebrity i'm a production company <laughs> yeah. i was like deal <laughs> <laughs> so we all dr dave rachel and myself we flew out to la to close that deal with joe mm -hmm. joe came on board joe's been on board ever since wow and we didn't sell the show until 2020. Mm. when i say i have the most outstanding dr dave rachel joe more an outstanding team like i could not ask for anyone mm. else i could not mm -hmm. and for them to stay 2016 we're in 2023 right that's that i mean my heart my heart and season one we were just about to go out to the audience joe and i mm -hmm. and i said i'm not asking you to do this but i'm asking you <laughs> are you still here <laughs> it was because i believe in the show and i believe in you tracy and i was like oh thank you joe i know so um just an amazing partner mm -hmm. you know as a co-host I think season one, we weren't quite sure where the show was going to go. This was our first time doing yeah, the show, right? Yeah. But Joe and I, together, we found our way. We found, and season two was even, and now I feel like, man, season three, we're going to blow that out the water as well. So like the actors, we are on pause because our show, we do book celebrity sag after actors yeah um however what i can say is during this time i think this is all the prep time for what's getting ready to happen mm. so um this is a great time for actors to be training yeah and be ready because when this strike is over we're behind this is going to be a lot of work a lot of fast movement yeah. and if you're not training in your craft now, you're going to miss some opportunities. And so just going back to Inside the Black Box, what has been the biggest thrill for me in this show is the show itself. Mm -hmm. And we got a Webby Award. Congratulations. Um, thank you for diversity, <laughs> equality, and inclusion. Um, last year, Trevor Noah won it. Okay. So um, one of the things that um, we... Thank you. No One problem. of the things that we are so grateful for is being able to have the opportunity to showcase actors. And you know, Julissa Capri has yes. been one of the actors that has gone on and had agents call, casting directors call. Same with Alfonso Walker mm -hmm. um, the third, and <laughs> Raina. So many of the actors that we've given an opportunity have gotten exposure from that. And then the other thing that just takes me over the moon is the fact that people will DM me, email me, and tell me that they use Inside the Black Box as a training tool. Mm, I love that. And South Africa actually called me about that because they said that, um, my guy over there was saying to me that, you know, the production value in South Africa is beautiful. It, hmm. It's really equivalent to us. Oh, okay. Really good. Wow. Not Ghana and Nigeria different, okay. but South Africa. Okay. Right? <laughs> and But he was talking about acting and how Inside the Black Box would be a great vehicle for them, for mm -hmm. their actors to learn. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's the thing. When they repeat, Joe has this thing. He's like, I approach a character. There are five things I ask myself. <laughs> so actors repeat Joe. Um, whether, you know, I give them casting tips like, you know, we're in, in Zoom right now. Where do you, where can we see your personality as casting director in your slate? Mm. Do you like your name? Do you like your height? Do you like where you live? Infuse that because we do need to know your personality. Yeah. So um, Inside the Black Box has just been a great platform to be able to do these things and then um 
we're just, I, I, I can't stop being grateful mm. of the opportunities. And recently we were um, shown again on the Sherry Shepard show. Yes. I didn't get a chance to see it the first time because, you know, I was in it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, my neighbors called and said, oh, they're repeating your show. And so I turned it on and I actually was able to watch it. And again, just major kudos to Emmy Award winning Joe Morton for having my back, for remembering stories I told him <laughs> <laughs> and being the best, the best support system you can ever have. The best. That is so yeah. beautiful. You you need those type of people in your life. Yeah. You need a roster of good people. It takes a village. Teamwork makes the dream work. Yep. All that good stuff. <laughs> and I don't, like, I, I, it was an idea that was nurtured and, you know, built on and, and, but I would never do it by myself or claim the credit all myself because, yeah. it, you know, it started with Spruce Henry, started with Cassidy Arkins, and mm. then Dr. Dave, Colin, Rachel, and Joe. It's, it's just been an amazing journey. And I am rooting for you all the way. <laughs> Yay! If there is one thing that you want viewers to gain from watching the show, what would that be? I would want viewers to gain the knowledge and the truth that we have the ability to manifest anything and everything that we truly want. Yes, say that. Yes, yes, yes. And there's so much noise in this world mm -hmm. and in our streets that we get easily distracted by the true power that we have. Mm -hmm. We are creators. Yeah. And I do this thing every Friday, and I think that it's important to um, use, I don't wanna say test, mm -hmm. but to use these um, techniques or ideas of manifestation mm -hmm. on yourself so that you could see, right? Yeah. So, true story today. Um, I, I don't call people consciously unless I have to. Yeah. I think of people and they either call, email, <laughs> DM me, right? Yeah. I wake up this morning, I thought about my girl, Raina, and I was like, Raina, I'm going to blow sprinkle dust. As soon as I <laughs> sat on that couch when I got here, she had texted me. I said, I swear, I just said you, and I was like, you know, and I get tired of saying that. Right. But you cannot put a value, like, I created getting a lemon bar one time. Mm -hmm. I was in Chicago doing Barbershop One. Okay. I had a little break, so I was going to the airport to fly home for mm -hmm. the weekend. Okay. When I was in the cab, I was like, I want a lemon bar. I was just craving a lemon bar. Yeah. And when I got to the airport, checked in, went to Starbucks, they had one lemon bar in that cake thing. Wow. Which I got, right? Yeah. So the other thing I do, I love the Dakotas. Mm -hmm. It's on 72nd and Central Park West. This is a building. It's very famous because, unfortunately, John Lennon was shot at that building. Gotcha. So the first time I went to Central Park, we got off at 72nd and Central and uh, Central Park West. Okay. And I saw that building, and I said, I'm moving in there. <laughs> I'm moving in there. So every summer, mm -hmm. I would sit, before COVID, I would sit in front of the bench across the street from the Dakotas and just wow. gaze into my apartment mm. and saw the wood, the mahogany, the original, all never been in my life. Mm -hmm. And... I was talking to a family member at that time, and she was like, what are you doing? I told her, and she was like, well, how are you going to move into something like that? What does it cost to move in, like five, ten million? I said, that's not my concern. Right. <laughs> my concern is to ask the how and the when, that's up to the spirit. I just stay seated in the knowing. And mm -hmm. so manifestation, manifestation is so easy that it's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I feel like that's a part of why people don't hone into it yeah because it really is you think you ask and then walk away from it and the tenfold is you believed mm. i'm gonna give you this wait hold on i'm gonna give you this too this let's put this in here too That's yeah. the tenfold. so manifestation is key to anything in life anything you have to believe you have to know and you just have to trust and that's the challenging for most people because yes. especially now we live in this society immediate gratification Right away, right away, right away. <laughs> and Chanel, I know you'll appreciate this story, but I had an um, intern okay. three weeks ago, a millennial, mm -hmm. and it was 9 o'clock in the morning. I said, you know what? I forgot to go get um, some fruit and some water. Yeah. And she was on the computer, and she went, 
I, you're me. She went like this. Oh my god. She said, as soon as I'm finished what I'm doing, I'll go downstairs and get what you need. So I sat there for three minutes and I said, <laughs> Am I in the twilight zone? Because I'm about to pounce on this girl. Right. But I said, No. This is why you have interns. You have to teach them. Mm -hmm. So I said, excuse me, I'm going to need you to go downstairs. And she said, I said. So you got to learn from your elders. Mm -hmm. If your resume does not match mine, if yeah. your bio does not match mine, <laughs> sit yeah. down. You sit need down. To, you need to learn. Sit the, down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you don't tell me what to do. Right. Right. So at this point, common courtesy, I need you to understand, excuse me, thank you, please. Very, very important in life. Mm -hmm. And you will never put your hand in my face. My children don't put, my grand, I'm going to have to break your wrist. <laughs> I'm an Aries. So um, I had to talk to her and then eventually, but the funny thing is when I said, can you go downstairs? I said, the third time I said, no, you're going to close the computer right now, mm. and this is what you're going to do. Yeah. And she went, and I said, mm. So that was the last day <laughs> okay. of internship for her. Yeah. She got a lesson. Mm -hmm. She got a whole bunch of love. Right, and she got sent on her way. Yeah, you have to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> Just saying, like, slow down. <laughs> slow down. Like, you guys can figure out how old I am you know, in my bio, you can add up the years, do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. I've been here a while. I got a lot of experience. Mm -hmm. Experience equals wisdom. Yeah. If you do not have the experience, you are hypothesizing. Yes. You're guessing. <laughs> I'm not guessing. I'm rooted in wisdom. Mm -hmm. You can learn a couple of things. Right. You ain't new to the game. You're I'm, true to the listen, game. Chanel, I just prayed. I said, <laughs> I pray in seconds. I just prayed. <laughs> Please don't let me go to jail. I love it. <laughs> Now, is that because you, to me, come across as just like you exude calmness mm. and being in control. <laughs> so would you say that you have prayer to thank for that? Yeah. Um, <laughs> what puts your spirit at ease? I don't. You know, there there are things in life that we want. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm considering right now where I want to live. Okay. You know, I love, adore New York, but it's time for me to um, to either go back to San Francisco, which mm -hmm. is my home, or, you know, think about other places. Yeah. So there's no urgency. There's no mm, want, want. I was six years old, and I was very clear. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think about this often, <laughs> but um, I want to help people. Mm -hmm. I was six years old in St. Dominic's Playground, and um, I said, I want to be like Jesus. Mm. And then Sister Ann, the blasphemy, Father Clyde, yeah. Tracy. And I was like, I don't know what all that is, but not Jesus. I want to do the things that Jesus, because I love when they read parables. Okay. I love that. So I was like, I just want to help people. So it was interesting. I did an um, interview three years ago, and I realized that I'm doing what I said I wanted to do. Okay. So that makes me happy to be able to help people and see them pursue their dreams because you have to be a witness, mm. a current present witness of your journey. And that empowers you. Yes. So I don't want for anything because the satisfaction of seeing a spirited actor on television or on a big movie screen or my clients getting a role. Mm -hmm. I, I, I get misty right now. Um, this is a little crazy, but it's real. Mm -hmm. Right now in my life, um, I was very blessed to coach prior to him getting the role, mm -hmm. Miles Frost, Tony Award winning Miles Frost. Yes. So I get a call uh, last week from... One of my dear friends, Yolanda Wins, is an amazing vocal coach. Amazing. And I also coached her in Color Purple on Broadway. Oh, nice. And she wanted me to work with someone. And when she said, his name is Miles, <laughs> and he's auditioning for MJ, I almost fell out of my chair. I was like, "This is God has a sense of humor. <laughs> That's why we got to laugh. We got to yeah. have fun. Because like, it's not that serious. And I was like, what are the chances? 
for another MJ to go right. back <laughs> into my life. So um, those are the things that just, you know, or to get a call, you know, um, I, I had seen Buster a couple of months ago before he went on tour and to sit in the studio and look at him in like 26 years. Oh, wow. My God, it went by fast. Yeah. But we're still here and that's how we talk. We're like, yo, you know, like right. that's my dude. Like to see that or Eve calling me mm. for ABC Queens and like Tracy, can you coach me? And I'm like, Of course I will coach you. Right. Eve. Like when we come full <laughs> Man, I work with Notori Not who I love to mm -hmm. death. Like I'm just blessed. Every day is a surprise. Wow. And that's another thing too. Like if you wake up being surprised with a brand new day, you're expecting good things to happen. Yeah. So I stay present. I expect surprises. I expect good things. And I treat people the way I want to be treated. Mm, yes. And I've had enough, um, you say enough, but like um, my son was born two pounds, one ounces. They told me he was going to die mm. 30 minutes after I had him. At 17, unfortunately, he got hit by a car, suffered traumatic brain injury. They said he was going to be a vegetable for the rest of his life. Mm. He's an actor and a writer on my show. Mm -hmm. When you see things like that and you go through things like that, it, it, it's, a, it, it's a different dimension that you live in. It's yeah. a different plane, right? Yeah. Everybody is saying this, but you hear something else. No, you hear yes. You know, impossible, <laughs> possible. Like, that's how my life is. Right. So I sit in that. I really sit in that piece and knowing that life is fleeting, time is fleeting, and we should really prioritize what's important mm. and really don't sweat the small stuff. Yes, no. That's a word to live on. That's a daily word for you right there. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Tracy, I think you are absolutely amazing. Aww. And I want to tell you a little bit more about how I feel about you. Ah. I'm very dramatic with my card ah. these days. <laughs> So, Tracy, mm -hmm. who doesn't love Tracy more? You've maintained the lane for yourself in this competitive industry, touching many lives along the way. I absolutely love being in your presence. You have this soothing aura that calms my anxiety and puts my spirit at ease. Mm. You graciously welcomed me onto your film set, trusting me to handle my responsibilities, never making me feel as if I didn't belong. <laughs> you are an intelligent businesswoman, a caring coach, a devoted and doting mother and grandmother, mm. and an absolute superstar. Mm. Thank you for being your undeniable self. Wow, I'm this gonna take you. that home with me. <laughs> Thank Please you. So. Oh my God, I can keep your words. Of course, I love this. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for observing that. <laughs> you know, because most of my friends are like, "You're so humble. You're so." It has nothing to do with humility. It's like I just know where my gifts are from, mm -hmm. and I I know the gratitude in which I give the spirit in that. Um, I'm just being of service and that's what we're supposed to do. And love, man, love. Yeah. I just want love. Yes. <laughs> well, it is appreciated. I receive it. And people need to know how to find you. How can they, you know, Thank you, watch Chanel. you, everything. <laughs> well, they, you can reach out to me. Um, the email is team Tracy and it's T R A C E Y. Um, Team Tracy Moore, M O O R E T S A, which is the Spirited Actors. So it's Team Tracy Moore T S A at gmail.com. All of my handles in social media are the Spirited Actor. So you can always, you know, DM me on Instagram. You can hit me up on Facebook. It's Tracy Moore. Um, please, yeah. And and I just want to say, like, uh, again, reinforce now is the time. Mm -hmm. Now is the time to get your house in order. Yeah. Because it's going to happen. We're not going to be here forever. And you just want to be prepared. Yes. Because you manifested, right? Actors all day. I want opportunity. Opp here's, boom, here's the opportunity. Uh, uh, yeah. No. Exactly. Opportunity not going to wait for you. Mm -hmm. So I love when Will Smith says, you know, I stay ready. Yes. So stay. you need to stay ready. Actors need to train. Writers need to write. Mm -hmm. Directors need to talk to their actor friends. Shoot. Yeah. Just do what it is that you do. And then once this is over, we can all have conversations again. 
Yes. <laughs> Absolutely love that. It has been an absolute pleasure having you Thank here. You. I'm so sad that it's over so Me soon. Me too. But you know what? We'll, we'll get a part two in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you're going to be doing some things and, you know, I want to talk about it. Yes, we're going to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Chanel. This has been the best. Thank you so much, Tracy. And thank all of you for watching. Until next time, this has been Undeniable. See you later. Let's talk a little about manifestation. It is very true that what you think about, you bring about. So why not intentionally think the best for yourself? Get up every day with the mindset that today is going to be the best day. I'm going to do the greatest things. I'm going to speak to the most wonderful people. Create the life that you want one day at a time. Being grateful for where you are and what you have in the present sets you up for bigger blessings in the future. The life you desire is at your reach. It's all up to you and how you think. Until next time. We did it. We did it. You're really, you really, you like this? <laughs> <laughs>